This hour of the Costa Report is brought to you by Simply Safe Home Security. Now until September 3rd, get $100 off Simply Safe's special summer package. That's $100 off at simplysafe.com slash Costa. Welcome to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and thank you for joining me for another two hours of Straight Talk Radio. I want to welcome listeners who are joining us on radio stations in all 50 states. Thank you for catapulting the Costa Report to one of the fastest growing news broadcasts in the country. And I also want to uh, extend a special welcome to members of our armed forces who tune in to the program from remote outposts over the Internet. Thank you for your many letters and for making us part of your Newsweek. In just a moment, Chairman Emeritus of Global Powerhouse Young and Rubicon, Peter Georgescu, will be joining us to talk about an issue which affects every individual business and government organization in the United States, and that is the unprecedented gap in income inequality. In my opinion, there is no better subject expert than Georgescu when it comes to laying out the mathematical and historical facts on how we got to this point, and more importantly, why the solution must come from business itself. So if you're a fan or you know a fan of Bernie Sanders, well, you're going to want to listen up because Georgescu's book is proof that there is always more than one way to fix a problem that's as complicated as income inequality. But before Mr. Georgescu joins us, as is my custom every week, let me take a moment to tell you a little about his background. Peter Georgescu was born in Bucharest, Romania. While his parents were traveling for business in the U.S., the Iron Curtain fell, and overnight they became enemies of the communist regime and were unable to return to their homeland. So Peter was separated from his parents, and at the age of nine years old, he and his brother were arrested and sent to a work camp. In 1954, through the intervention of President Eisenhower and others, the boys were finally reunited with their parents. Despite coming to the U.S. with no command of English and no formal schooling, the young Georgescu graduated from Princeton University and earned his MBA from Stanford. In 1963, he was hired by Young and Rubicom. And 37 years later, he retired as chairman and CEO of the firm. I also want to add that Georgescu has been inducted into the Advertising Hall of Fame, served on eight public company boards, and authored three best-selling books. And his latest book, titled Capitalists Arise, has kicked up a, a bit of controversy, something that we're going to hear more about in today's program. It's my pleasure to welcome to the Costa Report Chairman Emeritus of Young and Rubicom, Mr. Peter Georgescu. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Georgescu. Rebecca, it's a delight to be with you, and thank you for that uh, introduction. I appreciate it, and I'm very excited to chat with you about this really, really seminal existential issue of ours. Yes, it is a big problem, and I, uh, just so you know how I feel about this, the media has not given this the appropriate coverage, not during the election, and certainly not this year. We just seem to be so distracted by shiny objects these days, we just don't get to the heart of what is driving uh, economic uh, stalemates and also growth. Now, I have found that whenever you use the words income inequality, people automatically think you're going to launch into some social welfare plan designed to take money from the rich and spread it around. And Mm -hmm. the argument is, of course, that if you do that, you're disincentivizing capitalists. So the very first thing that I want to do is let our audience know that that is not your approach. And, And now that I've gotten that off my chest, let's start with the basics. Just how bad is income inequality in America, and what caused it to get to this point? Yeah, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you taken out off the table, so that we can have the listeners uh, really comfortable that there are different solutions to to issues. And uh, I will say also that uh, it's so important for us to understand the problem, <clears throat> because if we don't understand the problem carefully. Uh, the solutions, A, are not going to get the proper attention and and uh, the kind of resources that are required to make it uh, possible for us to get to the next level. And and also, if we don't understand the, the problem well enough, uh, we're not going to take it seriously. So 
how serious is the inequality problem? And that is uh, uh, the critical issue because income inequality drives all kinds of other problems. So what's happening in the vast majority of America? So I had the, the problem of trying to define inequality myself when I started to write this book, because if you look at it by salary level, you don't know what it means. Is 20%, we know that's really bad news, that's real serious poverty. At 30, you're still in poverty land. At the average of about fifty-two, fifty-three thousand uh, dollars a year, it's sort of the average, and how good is that, and so forth and so on. So I, I decided that I needed a new way to look at the issue, and I had an epiphany that is this, and I, in fact, the research <laughs> went and created this uh, solution to understand the problem. So I said, let's take all the income, every single aspect of an income, salary, wages, uh, and, and dividends, and so forth at the upper end of the scale. Let's put uh, unemployment insurance and food stamps and all support of local and, and federal uh, governments on um, assistance-wise, in other words, the trans so-called transfer benefits, put them all on the income side. Subtract from that taxes, and if any, and all the expenses in a household, every penny that is spent by a household. And then the question that I wanted to have answered is what's left in the cook uh, in the kitty at the home? That was the key. And it so turned you basically, out to be, just to sum up, you basically took every possible income at the highest level, every possible income at the lowest level, whether it was government. Uh, uh, subsidies, whether it was at the high end, uh, investment income, whatever, you took that total sum and then you subtracted what it costs to live. Right. Completely. That's exactly right. So here's what we found out. And I was stunned close to 60. Now we're talking about homes, not individuals, because I wanted to know what's in the kitty at home. So close to 60% of American homes have to borrow money to put food on the table at the end of the month. So let me that see if I understand this right. Once you did figure. that, yeah, once you did that, you found that 60% of the households in the United States have a deficit. They 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 take in less than they spend, so they have to borrow to live. That's exactly correct. That's exactly correct. Wow. Now that that is a that's a stunner to start with. And then the other thing I found out at uh, the top end, the happy campers, us, uh, that's 20% of America, or 20% of American homes are doing great. Life is as good as it gets. And there's no, uh, no <laughs> tax sales for them. And, and so then I wanted to focus on that middle, the, the, the upper middle class, if you will, because if 60% or have to, have to borrow money to put food on the table, what's happening to the next 20%, which at least arithmetically would be your upper middle class? Did the same kind of analysis and ended up that I, at the end of the year, what's, what this upper middle class group, uh, in essence, has $8,500 left over after all expenses. A year? That's our, Is that a year? A year. A so year. every year, at best case, they can put $8,500 in the bank. That's right. Wow. So if, if you combine that together, you have a serious problem. And if you triangulate this with some other data, you have Nobel Prize winning economist Joe Stiglitz, who says four out of five Americans will experience some form of poverty in their lifetimes. Or Janet Yellen, the head of the Fed. She said last year, an expense of $400 uh, and the vast majority of America cannot cope with it. Can't, can't cope with an additional expense of $400 a month. That, that, is, uh, that is really frightening. Now, we have to take our first break, but stay right where you are. We'll be right back with more from Peter Georgescu. You're listening to the Costa Report. When I say Italy, what comes to mind? Venice. 
Capri. Oh my gosh, Capri was marvelous. The views, the cliffside views, or traveling to Sorrento. Pirello Tours. Oh, Pirello Tours, for sure. Pirello. Hi, I'm Steve Pirello of Pirello Tours. With over 70 years of tour experience to Italy, it's no wonder Pirello Tours is synonymous with travel to Italy. I think of the culture. And to walk up to certain areas and touch a wall and think, well, this wall's like 3,000 years old. Being on a Pirello Tour on our anniversary was better than anything I can remember ever on an anniversary. I personally approve every itinerary to ensure a stress-free, once-in-a-lifetime vacation. Salute! Call now for your free insider's guide to Perillo's Italy. Call in the next 30 minutes and qualify for a $100 gift card when you travel with us. Call 800-897-7176. 800-897-7176. 800-897-7176. At Stellar, we're built from the ground up. From our humble beginnings in Jacksonville, Florida, Stellar was founded in 1985 as a general contractor with less than 30 employees. We continue to build, grow, and innovate with hard work, a dedicated, talented team, and a commitment to taking solutions further. We have grown into a global design-build leader. We now lead the way in the food, commercial, and public sector markets. And we are backed by a company-wide commitment to exceeding our customers' expectations. As we have grown, so have our capabilities. Stellar is with you every step of the way. Whether you're building a project from the ground up or enhancing your current facility, we do this because we are Stellar and because we cannot be deterred from our goal of taking solutions further. Visit Stellar.net, S-T-E-L-L-A-R.net. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. At 6 a.m., I make his breakfast. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. At 6 a.m., I make his breakfast. At 7 a.m., I shower. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. to give dad his medicine. At 6 a.m., I make his breakfast. At 7 a.m., I shower. I start laundry at 8. At 10, we go for a walk. Every day, I wake up at 5 a.m. For those dealing with the daily struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. That's why AARP created a community with experts and other caregivers for advice, tips, and support. Together, let's help each other better care for ourselves and the ones we love. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. I am done with my mattress. That's right. I'm not spending another night on this old bag. My new mattress comes today, and this thing is out of here. Bye-bye, mattress. Yep. Bye-bye, mattress. So says you and about a thousand other people every day. And that's a lot of old mattresses with no place to go. There's the landfill, of course, where they just take up space. But what a waste. Because you could send it to a mattress recycler, where old mattresses get broken down into steel, foam, wood, and fiber that become new steel, carpet padding, home insulation, garden mulch, biomass fuel, locomotive oil filters, and all kinds of other great stuff. So Bye Bye Mattress is right. But don't toss it. Recycle it. It's easy. And it's free. To find a mattress recycler in your area, visit BuyBuyMattress.com. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and my guest today is Chairman Emeritus of Young and Rubicon and the author of Capitalists Arise, Mr. Peter Georgescu. And before the break, you were explaining to us that the average family is unable to absorb an additional expense of $400 a month and that 60%, 60% of Americans are borrowing every year to pay basic bills such as food, housing, and so on. So let's talk about some specifics. Between 1948 and 2011, the productivity of American workers rose about 254% and wages increased less than half that. 
and actual wages have stayed flat since the mid-1970s. Is that right? Can that be right? Yes. Yes, that's right. Actually, that's right. That's exactly correct. And that's the, that's, the, that's the reality of what has happened. But I wanted to, just one more point on the issue of inequality. Income inequality drives the real problem in America, which is inequality of opportunity. And, you know, I, as you stated so, so nicely, I'm an immigrant uh, person who actually got to live the American dream. And what's the American dream? Is being, in my case, being the best Peter Georgescu I could be. And I arrived in this country because there was so much concern about my background because I was disadvantaged. And there's so many disadvantaged other young men and women in this country. And I came at a time when the culture of America was predisposed to reach out and help somebody. There was a sense of empathy in this country. And I had many guardian angels of not only, I had no relatives really other than my parents who uh, then had to leave and work overseas. So I was on my own. And, And so many people have helped me. And I think all of us who succeeded know that we got to where we are because we received help and guidance and mentoring and so forth from so many other people. And what I'm worrying about today is that the kind of education that I was able to get, because I was allowed to get to school, actually I went to a good high school, a good prep school, because somebody allowed me to get in, not because I was qualified, was an act of kindness or goodness. And those are the kinds of things that not just immigrant kids will never have. I would never be able to be who I became in today's world if I just arrived in America today. And so many other kids would have the same problem. These are Native American kids. Well, I think that's one of the points. Yeah, one of the points that you make in your book is that this kind of income inequality that is so vast and difficult to overcome effectively creates a caste system. Exactly right. We are, we are inventing the old India caste system because it's very difficult to get uh, where we want to be with this level of income inequality because that drives, for example, it drives education. You know, education is being paid by real estate taxes in America. And if there's, you don't have enough money to buy big houses and spare a lot of money, you pay little taxes, real estate taxes, and therefore the quality of the school is absolutely awful. And to give you just a little narrative, a little bit of a story, my co-writer's wife, Nancy, and they live in outside of Rochester, New York. She's a second grade teacher and she goes to school every new school year in September with a bunch of pads and pencils and, 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 uh, and pens in order to be able to give them to the kids the tools for learning, because neither the parents nor the school have the money to give the kids those things. And she spends the evenings in the basement of the school Xeroxing and copying, if you will, the textbooks to give to the kids, because that's the only way they can get educated. And that's the sorry state in too many zip codes around the country. Very poor education. Yeah, I, and look, I, I get that we've got a dis, discrepancy in how people are being educated. I, I understand that we have a major gap in income and, and that wages have remained flat for the vast majority of Americans. What I did not know, but through reading your book and reading your website uh, became aware of, is I didn't know that 60% of Americans are borrowing to survive right. and that they yeah. cannot, you know, most of them in the most recent survey claim they do not have $1,000 in savings. The most, of course not. I mean, that gets wiped yeah. out on an automobile repair. Exactly. You know, you, you, God you, forbid. Th- this is how fragile the economy is. I don't care what the economists are saying. I don't care what the press is saying. This is the reality for 60% of Americans, and I don't know why this isn't being covered uh, in greater detail. But let's talk about what's really driving this. What is the engine that's driving it? And you point to something that I don't think anyone else is dealing with, and that is the fact that 
the profits, the difference between this massive worker productivity and stagnant wages, right, that that profit has essentially been completely hijacked by shareholders. That's, None that's of it exactly is going right. back into investment, into increasing uh, increasing uh, uh, asset value. It's not going back into the employees who are, in fact, the creators of the value. In fact, today, employees are viewed as a expense on a balance sheet, not the creators of the value. This This pressure on Wall Street is channeling all money every quarter into shareholders' pockets. Is that the problem? Well, that's a big part of the problem. That is, uh, that is the controllable problem because we are doing that to ourselves. And that is exactly what happened. You were absolutely right, Rebecca. In Starting in about 1980, this is what happened. Let's remember that free market capitalism did amazing things for this country. It created the largest... Mark in the world, which is America's middle class. And that's but we what don't have free market capitalism no, today. No it's more. Not cap- it's not yeah. capitalism that's the problem. It's the, this, uh, this uh, aberrant version of capitalism. Rebecca, you're 100% right. We're so much on target here. That's what happened from about 1980 on. Because before then, we used to share. In fact, the rate of productivity increases and the rate of wages increases were identical, identical up to about 1980. And then that version of free market capitalism, as you said, got hijacked. And now there's a new religion, which is very simply the business exists only to make short term maximization of value for shareholder. That's the new mantra. There's a new theology. It didn't. Wa- it wasn't that way. It is that way now. No, and we can exactly mathematically. We can mathematically and historically track the fact that as businesses did well, employees did well, right on up to the 1980s. Correct. We can we can see yeah. this trend, and it then yeah. then there's a bifurcation which occurs, and it is very dramatic, folks. If you don't believe me, go to Peter Georgescu's website. He post this information, this historical information, it is irrefutable that this bifurcation occurred at the same time that wage inequality went on a rampage. Now, we have to take another commercial break, but stay back and stay with us. We're going to be back right after these important messages from today's sponsors. You're listening to the Costa Report. Summer is burglary season. According to the Department of Justice, every summer, burglary rates spike. You go on vacation or spend the day away at the beach. Your home is empty. Burglars watch for signs you're not home. No cars in the driveway, no lights on, and boom, it's an open invitation for a break-in. This is the reason Simply Safe Home Security has extended their biggest ever summer sale to September 3rd. A whopping $100 off Simply Safe summer package. I use a system myself, folks. It has everything you need to keep your home safe from intruders. And Simply Safe's round the clock monitoring is just $14.99 a month with no long term contracts. Absolutely nothing to lock you in. This is protection done right. So don't miss out. This offer ends September 3rd and systems are flying off the shelves. Go to simplysafe.com slash costa to save $100 today. That's simplysafe.com slash costa to get $100 off your system. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F face drooping a arm weakness s speech difficulty t time to call 911 because the sooner they get to the hospital the sooner they'll get treatment and that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery i'm paul george protect the ones you love spot a stroke f a s t fast life is why visit strokeassociation.org 
Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Women now make up 37% of the workforce, changing their role forever. Harvard Medical School has now opened its doors to new female applicants. The first woman is now in space. The majority of last year's doctorate degrees were earned by women. We've come so far, but our news is changing for the worse. More women die from heart disease and stroke than men, even though it can be prevented. Make a change at GoRedForWomen.org today. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the American Heart Association's Go Red for Women. Okay, what are you wearing right now? Nothing. That's right. So mommy's going to teach you how to dress yourself. Underwear always comes first, name tag at the back, then pants, then shirt. Get the first button in the right hole or you have to start all over. Socks going first, then shoes right on right, left on left. With shoelaces, just take the ends, cross them over, switch the loops, the rabbit goes down the hole, pull tight, and left with bunny ears. Got it? Why are your pants on your head? Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day, making sure they brush their teeth is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Visit 2 min 2 xorg to find out more. A message from the Partnership for Healthy Mouths, Healthy Lives, and the Ag Council. Psst. Yeah, you. It's me. Your heart. Listen to me. We've got to talk. High blood pressure is serious. And yours? Whoa. What happened to us? We used to be so much more active. But lately, you've been ignoring me. I know you think I'm just going to keep ticking away forever. But you're wrong. You can do so much more to control your high blood pressure. Doing the minimum isn't doing enough. I'm under a lot of pressure and can quit whenever I want. Bet you didn't know that. But I like my job. Just treat me better. Check on me. Give me something green to nibble on every once in a while. And maybe we can do some exercise on occasion. Let's get to it. After all, we're in this together. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. High blood pressure can lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get your blood pressure to a healthy range before it's too late. Find out how at heart.org slash blood pressure. Check, change, control. A message from the American Heart Association, the American Stroke Association, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and if you're just joining us today, our guest is Peter Georgescu, and we have been talking about the fact that income inequality can be traced to a change in business goals, wherein the new religion for business has become building shareholder value, which, by the way, has led to a number of quick ways of boosting that value, uh, such as buying back your own shares. But I, I, I want to point out that these kinds of measures don't really do anything uh, in terms of adding to real tangible value, uh, such as adding to productivity or operations or expanding brands. Is that right? That's completely, that's completely right. <clears throat> and the mantra is maximize it's even worse than that because shareholder value is fun we all want to increase shareholder value but maximizing short-term shareholder value is the problem because now we are so short-term orientated so we take all if you will all of the mindset and and, and energies of the management is to deliver short-term results and if you don't deliver which means every quarter you have to grow your profitability Every three don't months, do that, every three yes, months, your yes. feet are held to the fire to show yes. growth in profit. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous because that what that does is is really have changed around. So now the value creators would who are the real employees in the twenty first century, money is not no longer important. Capital is no longer important. Go to the bank and see what the value of your dollar is in a savings account. Right. So money is plentiful. What is not plentiful is productivity and innovation. In the 21st century, the winning companies are going to be those that create constant new innovation and reinvent themselves. And that's the critical asset, if you will. Well, how, which how, do we break, how do we break this cycle? Because, as you know, analysts step in and they estimate what, how a company is going to do next quarter and the quarter after. Right. And then they make their recommendations to financial advisors who then recommend what stocks to buy based on that. So right. there's this there's this infrastructure there. Well, so even if a, a CEO or, or executives in a company want to make long term investments that aren't going to have an ROI of one quarter or two quarters, their their feet are sort of held to the fire by this systemic problem. Yeah, well, that's that's there's a there's an ugly uh, sort of almost evil uh, circle cycle going on here. It's exactly right because that forces you. 
It forces you to treat employees as a cost. So you no longer, not only do you pay them little money, they become a, a sort of a transaction kind of relationship. You don't respect them, you don't reward them, you don't appreciate them, they don't feel appreciated. So why would the people who can create the productivity, who can create innovation, why would they wake up in the middle of the night to worry about how to make the business better? It's ridiculous. Well, now, in the short time that we've got left with you, tell me what the solution is. What can businesses do to break that cycle? Well, businesses can do a lot. Businesses, we, and this is what governments cannot do, because only business creates wealth for the country, for the business itself, and for the people. Only business, right? Governments facilitate, but they don't do that. Business can. And we can do that tomorrow. And what do we need to do? We need to change this mindset of short-term shareholder value because, by the way, the shareholders are not the owners of the corporation, which is a phony, fraud, fraudulent claim. They, are, they have rights, but so do the employees, so does the corporation. So management, the board of directors, and the culture of business needs to change away from just the shareholder being the, most, the only valuable part of the equation – To say it's got to be the customer, it's got to be the employees, it's got to be the corporation itself because we need to invest more in in our businesses to create more jobs. We have to invest in the the communities in which we do business. And if we do all that, and this is the tragedy, Rebecca, if we do all those things, the shareholder does even better. And we have proof of that. So, so, you, so you, might take a hit. you might take a hit in the short run, but in the long run, uh, it's, the, it's the only winning strategy. It's the only winning strategy, and you don't even have to take much of a hit in the short term because you can, you can evolve into it. You can begin to make the investments and grow those investments as the business begins to pick up. So it's not a question of taking – and let's go back to the beginning of what you said at the start of the program. This is not wealth redistribution here. What we're talking about is to, to, to pay people more higher wages from the incremental value of what they produce. Well, Do I will sum it up a little differently. Value? I'll say that what we're talking about here is a return to capitalism that works. Yes, yes. I think you should be my co-writer the next trip. Well, <laughs> better yet, I'll be yours. It would You're be great. An, That's exactly it, right. It would be a tremendous honor, sir. And unfortunately, we are just about out of time. I hope that you will come back and talk to us again about this very important uh, subject. The name of the book, again, is Capitalists Arise, and it has been a true pleasure having you on the program today. Thank you, Mr. Georgescu. Thank you, Rebecca. It, you were absolutely terrific, and thank you for doing what you're doing. This is very important to America. Thank you, and I hope you'll come back. Now, before we pause for a station break, I want to take another moment to brag a little bit about my son, Matthew. The other day, he stopped by on his way to work, and I immediately noticed something different. When you're a mom, you, you tend to do that. He looked so groomed and refreshed and If I didn't know him better, I would have guessed he'd come from a facial or a spa. And when I asked him what he was up to, he said, Hey, Mom, I started using the Harry's razors you ordered for me. And even though you told me a 100 years of blade-making experience made all the difference in the world, I really didn't believe you until I tried them. Now, the reason I'm sharing this story with you is because there really are some things you can't tell a person about, like the noticeably smooth glide you get with one of Harry's five-blade razors. These are things you have to experience firsthand. But once you do, you will join over three million people who have switched to Harry's just like my son. In fact, Harry's is so confident that you'll love the new feel and the look this shave gives you, that they're offering listeners of the Costa Report a free trial. Just go to harrys.com slash Costa, C-O-S-T-A, to get your ergonomically designed razor handle, five precision blades, shaving gel, and blade cover. All you pay for is shipping. So do it right now. That's harrys.com slash Costa. Costa. Remember to put the slash Costa, C-O-S-T-A in, to get the complete razor kit for free. The offer won't last long, so get your free Harry's razor shaving kit right now. And if you have a son or a husband that could use a good, clean shave, an easy shave, 
Well, do what I did and go to harrys.com slash Costa. Now, I have to tell you right now that uh, when I saw my son, I knew something was different, but I had I, I just didn't make the connection between the Harry shaving kit that I gave him. But I'll tell you that anybody who has to shave every day, and my son does for work, <laughs> he's one of those guys that's not ready to, to succumb to a beard or a mustache yet. Um, but I but I will tell you that, uh, you know, if my son, uh, Matthew, tells me that it made a difference, it made a difference, folks. So one more time, harrys.com slash Costa to get just about the best shave that you can get on the marketplace. And and uh, look, with the kit being for free, you've really got nothing to lose. You know, get it for yourself or get it for somebody that you know that, that would really appreciate uh, getting an upgrade. You know, particularly you fellas that shave every single day. You know, I don't know how you do it. Um, I remember standing at the sink watching my dad shave. And uh, if my dad was still with us, boy, I would have turned him on to Harry's in just a heartbeat. Now, we're going to have to take a short break. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you why tax reform isn't going to do enough to solve the growing problem of income inequality in America. I'm really glad George Georgescu was able to be with us today uh, for the very reason that when we talk about income inequality, we aren't talking about some massive social welfare system where we have to spread all the wealth around and disincentivize people that are entrepreneurs and small business owners. That's not the only solution to taking care of this problem. And today you were able to hear a new approach to income inequality. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Costa Report. If you're a fan of big ideas and thinking, then you're going to want to sink your teeth into On the Verge. Jim Lair, John Scully, Alan Dershowitz, and dozens of business and government leaders from the full political spectrum have given On the Verge their highest reviews. And you can help drive the book to the top of the bestseller list by ordering On the Verge from Amazon right now. Our goal is to distribute 25,000 copies before the official release date. By placing your order for On the Verge right now, you'll help us beat that number. We need every listener to go to Amazon.com and order On the Verge as quickly as you can. And while you're at Amazon, order first edition gift copies of On the Verge for friends and family because they won't last long. On the Verge, on sale now at Amazon.com. That's On the Verge at Amazon.com. I'm here today with Scott Caraccioli of Caraccioli Cellars. Scott, we keep hearing about the wines that are being developed in Monterey County. How would you describe the climate conditions for grapes? Monterey County has a lot of little pockets that give you the opportunity to grow a variety of grapes. It comes down to the match of location and climate with the varietal that you're going to grow. And where we grow in the highlands, it's prototypical cool climate. We're even in the northern side of the highlands. So that is ideal for both Pinot and Chardonnay. Chardonnay strives really well in a lot of our county, as well as Pinot, but I would say that this is the most optimal location. You get wind, you get sun exposure, the benches come off of the inland side of the coastal mountains. It's an optimal position. You can order any of our products directly from us by visiting our website, caracciolicellars.com, or calling the tasting room directly, 831-622-7722. It may be hard to believe, but people just like you are already saving money. FeedThePig.org makes it easy. Their simple savings plan teaches you how to start saving without going overboard. So you don't need to mooch off your friends. You gonna finish that grape? You mean the one in my mouth? You don't need to stop buying the necessities. What you're smelling is a natural musk. Ew. You don't need to be a medical test subject. How do you feel? Mostly okay. I... (laughs) Sometimes, though. (laughs) You don't need to get a second job as a stuntman. We need a new stuntman. Let's break for lunch. You just need an internet connection. Don't get left behind. Start your personal savings plan with the tips and tools on feedthepig.org. That way, you don't need to sell your soul to the devil. 
Fifteen bucks is the best I can do. All right, deal. Brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. I don't know if you've noticed, but we got a lot of food in this country. A lot of peaches, a lot of corn, a lot of apples, a lot of everything. We've got so much food that we can't even eat it all. So if we got all this extra food, how are 17 million kids in America struggling with hunger? I just don't get it. That's why the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks gathers surplus food and gets it to the hungry kids who need it. They can get you food even if you live in Idaho or Alaska or somewhere crazy like that. This isn't complicated. We got extra food and we've got hungry kids. Feeding America's done the math. Now it's your turn. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. I know you got internet on your phone, so what are you waiting for? We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and we have been speaking with Chairman Emeritus of Young and Rubicom and author of Capitalists Arise, Mr. Peter Georgescu. And you heard me say at the beginning of the interview that anytime anyone says the words income inequality, it sounds like the prelude to a government tax the rich and give to the poor scheme, and and folks just stop listening. (laughs) So what I enjoyed about Georgescu's perspective is that he doesn't believe this is a government problem. And to tell you the truth, neither do I. Sure, the government can provide incentives for businesses to do the right thing. But in the end, it is the fact that companies have traded short-term results on Wall Street for long-term viability that is the source of stagnant wages and ultimately income inequality. The quarterly pressure to improve stock prices is creating all kinds of problems and havoc for the economy. First of all, companies no longer make the kind of long-term investments in research and development and operations that they used to because analysts on Wall Street require those investments to pay off much faster than they did three and four decades ago. Financial analysts get paid to make forecasts on how companies and certain sectors will do in the future. And then based on those forecasts, your broker makes recommendations and and those brokers make recommendations to a lot of investors. So it's a bit of a racket because if and when analysts say a stock or a sector is set to take off, well, it often becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Everybody buys buys it and then it takes off. On the other hand, If and when a company indicates to analysts that they expect their profits to grow by X percent and then they make the decision to make longer term investments and they miss those earnings numbers, analysts are very quick to punish them because they made the analysts recommendations look wrong. Second, in order to squeeze every dollar possible out of quarterly results, employees are now treated as an expense and not recognized as the value creator. So the name of the game is to pay employees as little as possible, strip down the benefits, and return the profits which result from increased productivity and lower payroll costs to shareholders. Third, companies now resort to strategies designed to drive their share prices up, which do nothing to add to their real capabilities or the values of their brands or assets. Strategies like buying back their own stock. In the end, this benefits no one except for shareholders. It doesn't create more jobs. It doesn't produce more innovation. doesn't manufacture more products. It doesn't create higher asset value. Listeners of this program know that I have and I continue to consult with many of the largest companies and the brands in the world on the subject of fast adaptation which boils down to leveraging bleeding-edge technologies and developments in science to get out ahead of the competition, while at the same time building agile, fast-moving corporate cultures. And the more and more I work with these companies, I see how much quarterly profits are driving critical decisions in the boardroom and the top tiers of American companies. In many cases, executives are fully aware that a decision will cost the company in the long run, and they make it anyways. 
And as they consolidate more and more and more functions in order to drive down costs and they strip away systems that are rarely used or needed, they reach a kind of criticality. One where necessary redundancy has been mistaken for waste. And then, boom, something happens and there's no fallback. No inventory of parts, no employees that are cross-trained, no backup computing or security infrastructure, all gone, all taken out in the name of meeting their quarterly profit objectives. The idea of looking at performance and profits every 90 days is ridiculous, and it is slowly destroying capitalism as we know it. Large investors and shareholders are the only folks prospering from historic, I'm going to say it again, historic corporate profits, and which has now resulted in over 60% of the country borrowing to stay afloat and not borrowing small amounts, borrowing between nine and 15,000 a year to pay their bills. It it is hard to deny the math when it shows that 91% of all income growth has gone to the top 1% earners. What this means is that modern capitalism is not working the way it once did when Georgescu arrived in this country from Romania, when free markets really worked, When companies directed their profits into productivity, innovation, growing their brands, building loyalty amongst workers and customers, particularly workers that were responsible for increasing the value of the company. All the benefit cannot go to shareholders. This is a formula for disaster. Nor should CEOs and business leaders be punished for temporary losses, which frequently represent investments necessary to get to that next level. Now, not long ago, I was speaking with a family-owned company in the Midwest that was considering going public, and they felt they could make a lot of money and eventually hand off the company to others to run. And you want to know what my advice was? My advice was don't do it. I took one look at how they had successfully managed their company for the past 100 years and realized it was no match for the pressure to deliver bigger and bigger profits every few months. In no time, they would have been looking at cutting back labor costs and in so doing have had a catastrophic impact on the local economy, which was also doing great thanks to them. I don't know if they took my advice or not. But if Georgescu is right, better to be on the side of correcting income disparity than on the side of adding to it. And these days, the only way to do that is either stay private or accept the fact that Wall Street will, at some point, undervalue you. And on that note, before we run into our break, you know how much I love to give away free products and services on this program, especially when I use them myself and I know for a fact they work. So if you're struggling to fill a position in your company and you want, you definitely want to listen up because the longer a job goes unfulfilled, the more good employees get taxed. They're the ones that have to take up the slack when a job goes unfulfilled. So you want to hire fast. That's where ZipRecruiter can help. With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job to 100-plus job sites with just one click. Then powerful technology matches the right person to your job. And you can imagine how much time you save by posting a job just one time and then having it appear on 100 job sites. Never mind how much you increase the odds of locating that perfect person for your opening. This is why thousands of businesses, small and large, have turned to ZipRecruiter. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It goes out and finds them. In fact, over 80% of jobs posted on ZipRecruiter locate a qualified candidate in just 24 hours. So ZipRecruiter is not only thorough, it's also fast. Imagine being able to fill that job in one day. That, I, I'm an employer myself. I'll tell you, if somebody told me there was something I could do to fill a, a difficult-to-fill position in just 24 hours, I'd be all over it, particularly when you discover that you're not juggling emails or calls to your office anymore. You can screen, rate, and manage candidates all in one place with ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use dashboard. And right now, listeners of the Costa Report can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. 
That's right. It won't cost you one cent. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Rebecca. My first name, R-E-B-E-C-C-A. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Rebecca. One more time to try it for free, ZipRecruiter.com slash Rebecca. And if you have a boss that's having a hard time getting a job filled, be sure and tell them that the fastest way to get the best person for that job also happens to be free. All they have to do is go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Rebecca. How easy is that? And that is just about all the time that we've got this hour. If your station is leaving us after the first hour, my guest next week is known for his highly controversial approach to medicine and health care. Deepak Chopra will be here to talk about a healthier, more efficient way for Washington to approach this complex issue of health care. Uh, and by the way, if you haven't caught my article on Newsmax, that's N-E-W-S-M-A-X. I have a new column on Newsmax talking about uh, decentralization as the only hope for health care. And uh, we've been through so many cycles with so many presidents that I think it's time for us to think about allowing the states to develop and uh, fund and control their own health care systems. Uh, take a look at the article. Again, it's on Newsmax. Just type in my name, Rebecca Costa. Don't miss Deepak Chopra. He'll be here next week right here on the only news program that puts policy ahead of politics. You're listening to the Costa Report. Hi, it's MZ for Dr. Wallach. I've been working with Doc for 21 years producing his live radio program, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, each weekday to get his message of health and longevity through nutrition out to as many people as possible. More recently, technology is helping us get Doc's message out much more efficiently by enabling people to listen to Doc's archived radio shows on demand online at wedonthavetobesick.com. If you want to hear Doc's lectures, watch his videos, search his radio show archives, buy his books, and or purchase his unique health products, go online to wedonthavetobesick.com. That's wedonthavetobesick.com. Or for personal service, call 831-607-9355 and leave a message. That's 831-607-9355. Leave a message for a Doc Wallach approved human at 831-607-9355. That's 831-607-WELL. Or go online to wedonthavetobesick.com. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by FeedThePig.org. Well, I finally did it. I improved my credit score. You're kidding, right? Uh, no. How are we supposed to be the bad boys of electrosynth pop if you're out there being responsible? The band is about to be discovered. This is our year. Uh, yeah, you've been saying that for a while now. You think anyone in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was worried about their credit score? I never really thought that Of you're... course they weren't. Rock stars aren't supposed to think about that kind of stuff. We're supposed to think about how many guitars we've smashed, write aggressively sensitive power ballads, start questionable fashion trends, tragically break up and blame creative differences. All right, all right, just... I thought maybe it was time to take control of my finances, you know? Start using a budget. Get out of debt. Set some goals. A budget? Debt? Set some goals? Listen, I knew that we'd have our creative differences, but I was hoping they'd involve a little more scandal. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. The Costa Report is now heard in all 50 states on fine radio stations, including this one.